Welcome back, Survivors. Disturb Z here, and today we're taking a look at a game called Norland. Norland is a strategy simulation city builder survival game. See, it says, lead your noble family in this medieval colony sim facing off against class conflict, religious struggle, and political treachery. Tend to your people's needs, uncover the lost knowledge of a fallen empire, and engage in nefarious plots against your enemies. So there's a lot of stuff seems to be going on here. So let's go ahead, hop in here. Haven't had a chance to play yet. So let's go ahead and do a tutorial and let's see what we got going with this. Nearly 200 years have passed since the end of the devastating religious war. The empire fell and its former provinces eventually became barbarian kingdoms. The church managed to revive hope, and peace and prosperity reigned over the ruins of the former civilization. Over time, the influence of the church only grew. But history is cyclical, and power cannot remain in one's hands for long. Wars between kingdoms flare up, one after another. Hunger and poverty force people to abandon their homes and seek refuge in neighboring settlements. Can your dynasty unite the kingdoms and halt the advance of the Dark Ages? From this moment on, history is written by you. All right, guys, well, interesting. Very, very interesting. All right. Welcome to Norland. You are in charge of helping a noble family of lords who own a province in Norland achieve prosperity. Security and personal ambition. Your lords obey your commands, but they also have their own will. Your history is just beginning. All right. Camera controls. WASD. That's pretty normal. Okay. We got that. Zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. Got it. All right, when you need to stop and think, pause the game by pressing the space key or button in the bottom right corner. Okay, we did that. Speed up time. Sometimes it makes sense to accelerate the passage of time, for example, at night when everyone is sleeping. Try different game speeds using the one, two, three keys. Okay. Character needs. While you can only directly give orders to your lords, all characters in Norland have thoughts and needs. If these needs are not met, characters will become unhappy and start causing problems. 1. Select a lord by clicking on their portrait. 2. Click on the mood tab in the character menu to see their thoughts and needs. Alright, so let's click on this guy here and then we'll click here on the little smiley face. Food and alcohol. The most basic needs are food and rest, which are replenished by consuming food and alcohol. So I guess alcohol equals rest. Okay. You have a stock of provisions for the time being, but it's necessary to ensure reliable food and alcohol production so your characters don't go hungry. To do this, let's learn how to construct and manage buildings, starting with managing builders. Building management. In Norland, you only control the noble family, so you need to assign a manager to oversee the workers in the buildings. The instructions given by the managing lord are sufficient for three days, and on average, one lord can manage seven to ten buildings. That is, mm, that's a little concerning that they're only good for three days. I mean, so I'm going to have to constantly micromanage? Okay, well, we'll see how this goes. Building management. Let's appoint a manager to the hall where your builders are assigned. Select the hall. Click the management button in the menu that appears in the bottom left corner. Choose a lord for the manager role. Wait for the lord to distribute the instructions to the workers. 
Okay, so what is it? What are we doing here? What is it saying? It wants me this. Okay, okay, so I select the building. Gotcha. We go down here, select that. They want Domo Zara. Okay, Domo Zara. We got her. And then what do we do? And then we wait for the Lord. So let's speed up time. She's over there yelling at somebody, doing something. All right, next thing. Building construction. Great. The workers are now aware of your plans and ready to start building. Wood is the primary resource used in construction, so our first priority is to build a lumber mill. Click on the construction menu. Select the resources. Heading. Select the lumber mill and place it in the designated area. All right, so construction, resources, lumber mill. And then the arrow says to come up here, and there it goes. It, it goes, it turns white. All right, so we select that. And then let's see, now let's build a rutabaga field to ensure everyone has food. The rye field is best placed on fertile soil, otherwise it will yield very little. Click the right mouse button to go back one step in the construction menu. Oh, oh, I guess because I clicked off. All right. Okay. So we got a rutabaga field and they want us to put it right there. All right. So we got that after choosing the construction site, exit the construction mode using the right click, uh, wait for the construction of the buildings to be completed and then we can speed things up. So let's go ahead and speed things up. I'll zoom out a little bit here. The workers are going out there to do their thing. They're building. I like the little art style. Okay, so there's a question mark there. What did I miss? Um, do we need to... It's not letting me click on it. Hmm... Is it not done? Oh, no, they're still bringing... Oh, yeah, they haven't built it yet. Sorry. I was thinking that was built. No, that's not built. Okay, so they built a fence around it. Gotcha. All right, good. Assign managers. Since the employees need instructions, don't forget to assign managers to the new buildings. Note that the higher the Lord's management skill... The more additional product the building will produce under their management. Okay, so let's click here. Let's get a manager. And I'm guessing this guy, 232%. Yeah, let's get like lots of food. And then we'll come down here, select this one. And I guess this person, 210. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, alcohol. Great, we have food production sorted out. Now it's time for alcohol, which helps to relieve fatigue after a hard day's work. We already have built a brewery for alcohol production, so let's create an order for the production of the cheapest type of alcohol, moonshine, which is made from rutabaga. Okay, so we got open the production menu. And do until we got how many? A hundred units. There we go. We got that. Uh, let's see. Please note you already have 50 units of moonshine. So to complete the task of producing 100 units of moonshine, you'll need an additional 50 units of rutabaga. As one of the units of rutabaga produces one unit of moonshine. Gotcha. All right. Close the production menu. Appoint a manager to the brewery and start production. So the brewery is this guy right here. All right, so let's sit there and I guess we'll do him. I guess since we only have three, they have to do multiple or does it remove it from the other ones? I don't know. That weird symbol, I think we just removed a, a Lord maybe. All right, once the workers receive instructions, they will begin their duties. During the day, they work and in the evening, they tend to tend to their own needs. Receiving a wage, which they will use to buy food and alcohol from your markets and taverns. 
Prices and wages. Ideally, each character will consume one unit of food and one unit of alcohol per day. Characters will try to purchase higher quality goods whenever possible. Lords receive food and alcohol for free, delivered to the hall by the servants who take it from the warehouse. Open the finance menu. All right, on the right under the daily expenses heading, you can see the daily wages. On the left, you can set the prices and quantity of each resource that can be sold to the peasants every day. Peasants try to buy food and then use the remaining money on alcohol if they can afford it. By regulating prices and resources availability, you can influence their consumption of these resources, which affects their mood and financial savings displayed on the right. Currently, workers' wages are set or eight gold coins. The price of rutabaga is four coins, and the price of moonshine is seven coins. This is not enough for the peasants to buy both rutabaga and moonshine daily, so they will have to save for several days to go to the tavern. Let's reduce the price of moonshine to four gold coins so that workers can buy it every day with their wages. This will make them happier. Okay, so we're going to reduce this down to four. Peasants' mood. By satisfying the need of peasants, you increase their average mood, which affects migration. A high average mood will attract new workers to your city. Conversely, unhappy peasants will leave the city and become criminals. Let's find out what concerns them the most. Hover your mouse over the peasants icon in the top left corner. At the bottom, the strongest negative thoughts of the peasants are written, along with the number of characters that share them. We can see here that they are displeased by the flavorless rutabaga and unappetizing moonshine. We can resolve this by producing higher quality products, but we can't do that without specialized knowledge contained in books. But where can we get them? Ah, here comes the Holy Caravan to the rescue. They will sell us books and give us much needed gold for our other resources. Okay, so right now we've got seven tasteless rutabaga and seven repulsive moonshine. So even though we're feeding them and giving them alcohol, they are not happy. Gold circulates through the economy in Nor Norland in three ways. The pockets of peasants, migrants, trade with neighbors, and the holy caravan. Holy caravan arrives in the evening every one to three days and is the main source of gold, holy rings, a luxury appreciated by lords that serves as the currency of their class, books, and prisoners. Okay. Wait until the caravan arrives at its destination. Click on the caravan leader and select a lord to trade with him. Note that the higher the lord's trade skill, the more profitable the trade will be. The caravan leaves the city at midnight, so ensure you complete all your business before then. You can speed up time using the one, two, three, or the buttons in the bottom right corner. All right, let's speed it up. Let's do our thing. Okay, so there is the trader right there. We'll click here to trade, and he has the highest trade, so we'll click on him. Okay. Buy goods. Uh, the church supports the natural balance of supply and demand. So if you're so if you start selling too much of one product, the sale price will decrease. But for now, we shouldn't let this worry us. Sell thirty units of your moonshine you produced. Buy the book Hop Field and Beer. Close trade menu. Okay. So we'll click this guy and. So can we move No. So I have to just keep clicking. Can I shift click maybe? Yes, you can shift click. Okay. That is awesome. All right. So we'll just do that. So we got that. And then it wants us to click over here. And there is the hop in hop field in beer. Allows well, the construction of hop field and the production of beer being studied in the knowledge menu. This to study at least level three intelligence is recommended. Okay, so we'll get that. We're gonna trade. Close that menu. 
All right, books. Now that we have a book on our, on how to grow hops and produce beer, you can study it in the library through the knowledge menu. Now that we have a book on how to grow hops and produce beer, you can study it. Okay, we've already done that. Uh, let's see, books. Books can be written in different languages, but most are written in the imperial language. Open the knowledge menu, assign the Lord to study brewing. Okay, so we're going to learn that, and we're going to put her on it. Okay, if at least one Lord has read a book, the abilities in it and effects it enables become avail available to all. However, when that Lord dies, all benefits of the knowledge will be lost. Okay. All right. Task for lords. Besides managing buildings, your lords can also carry out other tasks. However, they will refuse to do any task if they are unhappy. It seems that one of them is already unhappy now. This is indicated by the red background in their portrait. Let's see what happened. Select the unhappy lord by clicking on their portrait at the top or finding the lord on the map. Okay, in the Lord's character menu, you can see their main status indicators, such as mood and loyalty, inventory, and traits. You can hover over any icon and indicator to learn more details. Okay, if a Lord's mood is low, they may become depressed, refuse to carry out orders, and experience quickly decreasing loyalty. If loyalty falls below 25, the Lord may leave your noble family or start a rebellion. Now, to find out why the Lord is unhappy, let's move to the Needs tab. Torturous Desire. I must do it at all cost. Reason? Obsession. Okay. Uh, so, an unfulfilled wish is bothering this Lord. Now, let's return to the main tab to fulfill this wish and thereby improve the Lord's mood. So, they also have no rings. So, we're either going to torture someone or we're going to give them some rings. One of the two. Desire for rings. Okay, so we're going to go with the less violent approach. If you hover your mouse over the desire icon, you will see that this Lord dreams of holy rings. The rings that appear in the resource list in the upper left corner belong to your king and are in his inventory. All right, let's share the holy rings with the with this Lord by rewarding them. In addition to satisfying the current desire, this action will increase the Lord's loyalty. Click the action button, select the king, select the reward. Okay, so there's the king, there's the reward. Okay, uh, let's see, great. Your king finds the time he will reward the Lord you have chosen. However, you can make him complete this task immediately. Click on the king. Click on reward task in the list. Uh, wait for the king to reward the unhappy lord. Why do they gotta do it behind the plant? It's like very suspicious. And why do we have like burning skulls over here? I just saw that. Okay, let's speed it up a little bit here. Okay, actions on the map. Holy rings like the ones you bestowed upon your lord cannot be produced. They can only be purchased from the holy caravan with gold. And since selling large volumes of goods lower prices with the caravan, sometimes it makes sense to trade with neighbors where the prices remain more stable. Relations with neighbors. To enter into a trade contract, you must either be in the same state as your neighbors or have friendly relations with them. There are many ways to establish friendship with a neighboring king. Give him a gift, send you... Send your lord on a mission or simply send your king to hunt together with him. Okay. All right. Now let's improve the neighboring king's attitude towards you so we can then set up a trade deal with him. Go to the world map. Click on the neighboring city to open its menu. Click on the action button. Select the lord. Select the king. Select hunt. Choose your king as the hunting partner. Wait until the kings have hunted together. 
Hint, to access the world map, your character must first reach the edge of the local map. To click on their portrait at the top to follow them. Okay. So we'll go there. We will go here. We will go to that. We will go to our king. M. Tumison. M. Tumison. Oh, yeah, I don't know. And then we're going flesh wolf hunting. Uh, let's see. Their attitude towards each other will improve. Okay, there is a risk of injury. All right, so we did that. And now, let's see. Let me go to the king. Where is he? Okay, here he goes. He's running over here. Yep, he's going flesh wolf hunting. Awesome. Okay, excellent. Your kings had a great time together, and now the neighboring king considers you a friend. Relations above 25. It's the perfect time to talk business. Click on the neighboring city to open its menu. Click on the action button. Select trade. Select buy moonshine. Assign your lord to finalize the deal. And then the city buys moonshine. Okay, so we do that, and then we put our king on there. He runs over there. He talks to him. All right. Wind speak or wind peak success. My sincere friend Vidadar. I am writing to express my delight at the inception of such a lucrative trade agreement. Not everyone can sheath their sword and, and engage in negotiations. Signed, in the presence of the bishop, King Atmutism. Okay, so that's their king. So my king is Vidadar. There's, okay, I got gotcha. you. Uh, let's see, we have entered into a trade agreement. Relationships with him have improved by 10. The city budget of the partner will increase and the population of their city will grow by one inhabitant after each transaction. As part of the trading agreement, their king will offer to buy 15 moonshine for 53 on a daily basis, which amounts to four gold per item. Okay. Deal made. While the deal is active, every morning at 11, a button to sell moonshine will appear in the trade menu. The price negotiated by your lord will be honored even as prices fluctuate on the main marketplace. Open the trade menu, sell the moonshine at today's offer, close the trade menu. Okay, so we got to open that. We click here, and then off we go. And then it says to go there. Okay, bandit attack. Oh, holy Sophia, bandits have stealthily approached our settlement. We must fight back. Fortunately, we have some time before they launch their attack. Open the army menu. The army menu allows you to create combat squads, but first you need to hire warriors. Click the add button. All right. We have a few warriors, but we would like to increase our chances. You can add warriors by freeing prisoners, inviting unfortunate peasants, or hiring mercenaries. Newly hired peasants and prisoners will be consumed by fear of death and will run away at the first sign of danger, while mercenaries usually need one or two days to reach your settlement. Hiring warriors. Fortunately, there's a group of mercenaries near the city ready to be hired right now. And there is some weaponry in the warehouse, so let's increase your army. Note that you must pay the church a daily tax for your warriors, the amount of which depends on their skill. Hire several mercenaries. Okay. Oh, down here. Okay, so I'll hire him, him, that one, and we're good. Creating a squad, every unit should be led by a lord. The higher their command skill, the higher the unit's morale will be, and the lower the chances of the soldiers fleeing when taking damage. You will also select the warriors who will form the squad and the equipment they will be armed with. The distribution of weapons among squad members will be automatic, with your more skilled soldiers receiving higher quality equipment. Click on the squad creation button. Select a commanding lord. Move all your warriors to the squad by clicking on them. Move the second lord into the squad as well. Arm your squad. 
Finish by clicking on create at the bottom of the menu. So we go over here to army. We go ahead and and then we just select everybody. Okay. Uh, let's see, and then we gotta give them weapons. Okay, so we got weapons, we got armor, we got the shield. Create six warriors, six weapons. Okay, so we did that, great. Now wait for your new warriors to pick up their weapons from the warehouse. Use the space bar to stop and start time. Squad management. The squad is under your direct control. You can be managed with the right mouse button. You can find its menu in the lower left corner. It's time to attack. When the squad is selected, click the right mouse button on the enemy squad's banner and engage in combat. They are waiting for you in the northwest or yeah, northwest of the village. Wait for the battle results. Hint, you can also send the squad to any location on the map by clicking the right mouse button on the ground. Okay, so this is the squad, yes. Okay, so we got the squad. Let's come up here. There they are. And here they go. All right, victory. The bandit squad has been defeated and their leader is vanquished. Your warriors will capture and take as hostages those who survived, and the peasants will bring them to the settlement later. Now is a good time to launch a counterattack on their camp. Switch to the global map. Okay, uh, click on the bandit settlement. Its menu will open in the bottom left corner. Select attack. Select your current squad. And then send army. Wait for the squad to reach the bandit camp. Okay, there they went. They're over there fighting. Your party has reached the bandit camp and is preparing to launch an attack. So we click on that. And then we click on here. So what do we got here? This is our forces, I guess. On the battlefield, when you initiate the attack, your squad is posi positioned on the left while your enemy is on the right. Click on your squad's banner to control them. Okay, so we got that, and then we right click over here, and we wait for the results. That one ran. Get him. All oh, one escaped. Camp of the Forest Bandits. Bandit camp destroyed. Relationship with neighbors plus five. Attitude of matriarch towards your king plus twelve. Loot seventy five gold and no people. Okay. Help menu. During the game, you can always seek assistance by opening the help menu. Sometimes hints related to your current situ situation will appear here. You can disable this in the settings menu, the escape button. After a few seconds of the hint being displayed, it becomes frozen in place. And you can hover over the highlighted words to receive additional hints. Congratulations, you have completed the basic training. You can now continue the current game at easy difficult level or through the main menu start a new game by creating your noble family and customizing the political map and difficulty to your liking all right guys well i think that's about it for today's video that is our first look at norland and it's kind of an interesting game i like the concept of how you do it now i'm not all entirely sure about the whole three day uh management thing i'm, I'm a little feels a little micromanaging to me but yeah we'll give it a shot anyway let me know if you want to see more of the game and i can always do a small series on it and we'll see where things go but that is going to be it for today's video i do hope everyone has enjoyed it if you have 
be sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. It is an awesome way for you to show your support to me, to the channel, to the video, and to the game itself. And as always, feel free to share that video on any social media you're using. You guys like to stop, take a moment, and thank each and every one of y'all for all of your wonderful, awesome support. All the comments, all the likes, all the subscribers, and all the videos shared. It is awesome, and I do appreciate it. And with that being said, until next time, survivors, keep on surviving.